Oh, thank you for thank you for the invitation. And uh, we vraiment we have tried to uh, select something from my uh, recent research and also the joint research review leading to joint research review. And so we decided to restrict to two parts. One three years ago about this topic, and uh, a more recent one about uh, what we do together, quantum information, free manifold, and so on. And at, at the end, very briefly, I will uh, uh, summarize what I have in mind this, uh, this, these weeks to continue the, the research. It's also to do uh, with what we can do together. So, uh, it turns out that these are two, uh, two talks that were prepared, so it's clean. Maybe it's not understandable, but let's see. <laughs> Please, uh, I, I don't want to enter into too, too all details, but I think it's better that I explain uh, the, the context, that I explain the give you a broad overview of what I had in mind at that time. Uh, first, you have to know that I did classical uh, things, classical and some classical mechanics, for a long time, and only uh, about 15 years ago, I started to, uh, to um, study quantum mechanics and see if I could uh, add something to the existing knowledge. Uh, at the beginning, I'm an engineer, and then I became try to become a physicist and sometimes a mathematician. That is my, my, my idea, uh, my, my way of life is to apply mathematics to, to physics uh, all, all the time. So now it's about quantum mechanics uh, uh, and more precisely quantum information, which nowadays is a very popular uh, field. Also because one can do big things and uh, make them work. Uh, one is in a, we have been in a, some sort of uh, technical revolution since the last 15, de 15 years or more. Uh, and this is, this is a, called quantum information. That means qubits, qubits, two qubits, and so on. Uh, instead of uh, the classical bits, in the title, quantum contextuality, which is very peculiar to um, quantum physics. And the second uh, law here means that some aspects, at least, of this quantum contextuality uh, can be thought using uh, mathematics developed by um, Alexander Grothendieck uh, some time ago. It's, uh, what he did. This is part of uh, what he did. At the beginning, it is physics, and there are basic questions in quantum physics. What is this? What, what does it mean? Bell theorem, entanglement, non locality. First question, second question. Uh, what what is quantum contextuality? And in fact, non-locality, but in this, in my, my view, my view of many people, um, non-locality is just part of uh, contextuality. Without any question, one can say there is no reality, there is no underlying reality before you observe it. So you put your knowledge, you put your uh, choices, uh, when you do uh, uh, an ex experiment in, uh, in, in quantum physics. This is a, an essence. Many people are talking about uh, the foundations of uh, quantum mechanics, interpretation of quantum mechanics, but since, since the time of war, it was clear that uh, quantum mechanics is a language to approach reality. There is no reality before you Look at it. This is the message. But it can be okay. I just this is just a message. The language. It's a 
But I'm saying, well, do you do you believe me or not? <laughs> 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 so, and precisely what I, 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 when I talk about contextual, contextuality, to, to believe me, I need to convince you. So I, I need to to develop such a language that uh, uh, you cannot say uh, uh, no. What you are saying is wrong. So everything's classical. Uh, you, you don't you don't create uh, the world. It, uh, it is beyond. It is the, the world exists be, be, without you. The classical, but I have some people and me say it's not it's not true. So now I have to be more technical. But before uh, this, um, you see there are papers about these things. Uh, that are published, and one, one of them is the bottom information processing, the part I'm talking about, yeah, about the relation to bottom uh, theories. Michel, yes. will, will, you, will you be considering in your thinking here the middle position, which is that the world is not classical, but that there is some in-between concept similar to um, Bohmian mechanics in, in spirit, where there is something that can be said to be real. For example, one could say the superposition is real. In other words, you can uh, give ontological reality or truth to things without requiring a human to do a measurement. But that whatever that view would be, it has to be true that when the human does the measurement, something special happens. Right, where you can get like the, the quantum eraser experiment mm -hmm. effect. Uh, okay, maybe may, I don't know the detail of the Bohmian uh, mechanics, but may, many people uh, try to enter this uh, view that uh, one can, in some sense, don't well, one can't not uh, uh, avoid to escape classical physics by developing some uh, type of Bohmian mechanics. But uh, this is not my, my position. I think uh, we have a language. This language was created by Bohr at the time of Einstein. There is a famous paper, EPR, Einstein Podolsky Rosen, where Einstein talked about elements, what are the elements of reality, okay? And I, it was clear after a uh, few years, and it is the uh, well known Aspe experiment that uh, quantum mechanics is a right theory and one cannot escape this theory. Uh, any other view is, right. not, is not correct. I've, at least well, the, the aspect experiments uh, allow for certain classes of non local and non deterministic. Yes, precisely, I will talk about yes. that. Yes, yes. Aspe, uh, in fact, Aspe has to do this, this part, and there is uh, another part which is more general, which is quantum contextuality. Uh, precisely, this is, uh, this is uh, what I, I will be talking afterwards. Uh, first, uh, Okay, first I talk about this, uh, not directly between with Aspect experiment, but with the so-called Bell theorem, Bell, Bell question, without enter, entering into uh, too many details. Uh, you can uh, summarize a Bell, Bell point of view in terms of uh, four observables, classical observables, and you can define such a, this type of number, C, which is plus or minus two, as soon as the sigma i, r minus one or one, classical. And one can also, if one can do a lot of uh, such uh, calculation, one has an average of this, which it should be uh, lower than two. Lower by four to two. So this is the, the Bell, so-called Bell inequality. And it turned out that uh, in quantum mechanics, it is violated, one can go above these two, and in fact the maximal violation is two square root of two, and how uh, one proceeds, in fact one introduces, instead of having the sigma i that plus or minus one, one introduces, so this is for two, two uh, dimension four of the space, two qubits, and if you, for example, if you select here 
this comes a product of I and the shift uh, matrix. And this and this one, sigma two, Z matrix, phase matrix. You know what is X? X is just uh, X is zero, one, one, zero, and Z is minus one, one, zero, zero. That means if you apply it, this X to a qubit, then you get to qubit zero, you get the qubit one, okay? Zero, one, is one, even zero. And here, if you apply Z zero to zero, it gives you minus zero. For one. So, in fact, it's the basic, the basic of uh, quantum information theory, two main operations, the shift and the change of phase. So here, these are, these are, these are the are matrix there, but now we are living in a four-dimensional space, and that's if you take these uh, basic matrices, then you can compute such a uh, C, uh, C square matrix, and this, this value field is one, the six square is, is this one. Now if you want to go back to uh, what you measure, you have to be more precise in introducing norm uh, to C square, so that at the end you have C square for the, for the norm C, and these two are out of two. Well, this is technically key, but essentially that means that when, when one want to pass from uh, the classical to the quantum, uh, one pass from real, real values to uh, matrices, where you, you do, uh, where you have to extract an expectation value. So this is, this is essentially summarized uh, what Bell did. And there is maximum violation with this example. So it's, that means that uh, well, you could do that in several ways. In fact, for this two qubit, you could have 90, uh, 90 uh, different uh, proofs. If you would have uh, three qubits, you could generalize. You would have even more uh, possibilities, but it's not what it interests for me. Uh, this is a, a, a sentence due to Perez in 1995 that looked at this, uh, uh, at this topic. And uh, with the uh, Mermin that I will mention afterwards, uh, he uh, introduced what I will be uh, talk talking now, uh, that uh, we have to talk not only of, of Bell, uh, Bell proof of non-locality, but something more general, which is Bell caution speaker proof. And caution speaker uh, means that one can uh, demonstrate the impossibility of Einstein assumption uh, that they are element of reality, uh, at least one can, and this is answer the question, one can exclude, one can exclude hidden variable theories uh, that require elements of physical reality that, that are non-contextual. It doesn't exclude all theories, but it excludes at least theories that are non-contextual. Uh, the, the essence of this um, proof, very crucial thing, the uh, proof. Well, can you define non-contextual? Non-contextual, more or less, this is what I said at the beginning, that you are selecting a, a choice in your measurement. Uh, you are, this is the context. For example, you take a magnet, you, in a given direction, uh, <coughs> this is a choice. You could take a, a magnet in the, the particular direction, this is, this is the choice you have. So the choice. context is the setup of the measurement apparatus. You can summarize like that. This is a measurement apparatus and the choice you, you take uh, for, the, for the measurement. This is the context. But this can be uh, more precise. And, uh, but essentially, you can also say another thing, uh, which is the mathematics, if you like, the mathematics of, uh, of contextuality uh, can be uh, summarized like that. You have compatible, uh, even for compa this essence of the proof, even if it is observable A and B are compatible, that means commuting, 
if they are non-commuting, it's easier to understand. But even if they are commuting, that if they are compatible, then and you, and the observation of uh, observable A gives you mu of A. In that case, it's plus or minus one for the, for the choice that I took with uh, this two qubit operator. Uh, you can you at the end you would have a, a violation of the linearity or of this product law. One of the equation or two will be violated. Even more uh, gen generally, you can say you, you you cannot have the same algebra for the eigenvalue than you that you have for the operator themselves. And why? In fact, mathematically, it's easy to understand because this is due to the degeneracy you have in the matrices at the beginning. We had these matrices four four by four matrices. The eigenvalue of plus or minus one. And there are not four different eigenvalues, there are only two different eigenvalues. And due to this degeneracy in the eigenvalues, then it is allowed to, to have such a violation. Does, does the, um, this Koken uh, Spectre proof in 1967, does this allow for certain non-deterministic and non-local hidden variables theories to exist such that certain theories that are that are contextual or that are that are not dependent on human observation can be allowed within the aspect proof. In principle, uh, yeah, you got you, it is allowed in principle. Yeah. But at least it, this approach excludes some some kind of, of uh, right. But now there are developments that are we not be talking about. I will talk about contextuality in the sense I already introduced, uh, contextuality of measurements. But now uh, people involved in this, uh, in this topic, I'm not longer involved with that because it's too close to philosophy for me, uh, are introducing the idea of preparation to contextuality different from measurement contextuality. So there are other possibilities if you, this is what you have in mind. Yes. Many people are continuing uh, working with that, but not, not me. Like the Bohmian view that I brought up earlier, that some, is non, some, that's non-local and not and non-deterministic and not excluded by aspects, you know, experimental work. It is po this is po this is possible. Okay. Yes, this the, is possible. The Bohmian view may be contextual. The, the, the key issue I think he's talking about is the contextuality. Well, no, but does the variable depend not just on the particle itself, for example, but also on the kind of measurement you're choosing to set up? Right. As far as yeah, as far as I know, the Bohmian view, if non-contextual does indeed mean it must be connected to an experiment, then I do know that the Bohmian view then is not requiring the pilot wave, for example, to exist or not exist depending on whether or not it's being observed in an experiment. But okay, but you answered my, my question. That in my, principle my view, my view now, because I have some f feedback on, on this, and I, I did other things in the direction of quantum computing, and also topological quantum computing. My view is that all these problems we have to, in the interpretation of quantum mechanics are due to the language we use. If we, if the language contains more elements, more uh, sophisticated, not sophisticated, Nuan nuances. If you want more, if you have the appropriate language, then you can say that there is no problem at, at the end. I, I will be show, show you this with very simple uh, proof of quotient speaker theorem based on the so-called Mermin square, three by three grid, Mermin pentagram for three qubits. Uh, these are which are basic element for the for the proof, and then I will say at the end that in fact it, it's enough to have group theory to understand this problem. Uh, that means you, of, you forget, at least for a while, you forget the matrices, you put the element of a, a free group on two elements. Two elements, this has to do with Rotten Dix, the part of Rotten Dix one. This is what we'll be saying in this talk. And then in the second one, uh, okay, three years later, uh, you know what I have in mind, that uh, uh, Contextuality exists somewhere in, in, the, in the calculation, uh, but it's all. It's not. After all, it's not so important. What is more important is to have a, 
a way to access the reality, do computing, do interesting tasks, and so on. So it, it is not so so peculiar after all, after after all, because it's part of the mathematics if you use the right mathematics, and it goes. It can make go in several directions. I will uh, find. Uh, I will show you a few. So now, uh, okay. I will not enter too much in, in, into that, but a uh, 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 bell cushion speaker proof has to do with uh, um, operators and, and mutually commuting operators on the last basis. And you can uh, say that uh, uh, it is true or it is false, it is just a rule to, um, to it is just a rule. Let me just, instead of entering this, uh, let me, um, okay. here, this is the, the so-called uh, uh, Mermin um, proof of the bell cushion speaker theorem. That means we, we start with three, four dimensions. The three dimension is possible, but it's more, much more complicated. Uh, four dimension is, is, with four dimension, you just need uh, Nine uh, operators. Uh, Z1 means uh, Z times I, the identity matrix, Z2 uh, I times Z. Okay, this grid. You have nine operators uh, that are ordered in rows and columns, and a row means that the, on a row on a column, the, the operators are mutually uh, commuting. And on the other hand, in this particular example, if you multiply all three uh, operator on the row, on the column, you get i, except for the right hand side column, which is minus i. <coughs> okay? But now, as I said, a, every operator has eigenvalue plus or minus 1. So, do the product of all. Now, suppose if each such operator has a given value. Eigenvalue, okay? Then multiply by row and column, at the end we get what? That is what will be the result since the eigenvalue is plus or minus one. Or given what will be the result? If I multiply, you got the given eigenvalue plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one. Do that, multiply like this, and you get what? Plus or minus one. No, plus one. Plus one just because, uh, suppose you have plus one here. Multiply like this, we have plus one. But we have minus one, since you, you find it twice, it will be plus one as well, okay? Because you multiply like this, like this, like that, like that. Or if you have minus one here, you, you meet it in this row, but when you um, take the, the column, you, you have the same value, minus one, you will get minus one twice. Plus one, okay? At the level of eigenvalue, the algebra will give you plus one, okay? But now for the operators, I, 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 I minus the identity operator, okay? There is a violation of the type of inequality I mentioned at the, before. This is a contradiction. Uh, so this is a proof of the bell cushion speaker theorem. At least this is a the, the proof given by Mermin in terms of the uh, operator only. But we can also give a proof in terms of the uh, state themselves. Well, in this part, in, for two qubits, in fact, these are the possible states. There are 24 of them. Like this. This means uh, minus one here. One bar. There are 24. You can create 24 um, mutually, uh, uh, 24 bases in the sense that all these elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, and one more, are mutually commuting. This is the, the computational basis, okay? But there are many other ones. 524 the rule. And with this, you can create a contradiction that can be summarized again with a, with a 
type of Fermi square, if you like, but except that now the vertices are, are bases. Uh, so, believe me, but this is enough to, to create a contradiction corresponding to what I was mentioning here. The Lancushan Baker proof in terms of vectors. It's one, one possible proof. But one can do better. This is part of the, the, the work I did. Just because, uh, in fact, imagine you have bases, A and B, the type of bases I, I showed you before. Uh, you can uh, look at the distance between the bases <coughs> A and B, like this. Uh, it happens that you have that A, the base A and the base the base AI and the base BG are complementary. There is a quantum complementarity. But here it's a discrete quantum complementarity. If this is the case, one, one sec, if, if this gives this product here, gives you one of the day, we're talking about mutually unbiased bases. Yeah, mutually unbiased bases. This is maximum, maximum complementarity one can have. It is a, also a the um, game to find all mutually bases in a given dimension, but this is something one can. Uh, I started with this when I entered quantum mechanics. Here, uh, mutual unbiased bases, basedness is part of the, of the picture. So, either you have this equals zero, that means that the, the distance between the bases is one, or you have something else. I turn over here that there is an, histo an histogram. The value of the distance are in a discrete set of values that are this value. In fact, in the, for this case, they only need five different, different values of the of the distance. And uh, this, the, the proof I show you, this one corresponds to a two and a four uh, having this value. Only these two, these two uh, values of the distance may have. May have Appear. This is the mean, this is the, the proof with 18 vectors and 9 bases. The bases correspond to the row and column. Okay. Uh, but there are the others, there are other type of histogram like this, and that correspond to other type of, uh, of proof. So it's just a way to, to, to show all quotient speaker uh, type contradictions with two qubits. And as a, as a rule, it turns out there are two, two to the nine proofs. And now about three qubits. Again, you can create a contradiction. This and this is the same. Here it's a pentagram. Uh, Z, Z, Z means it's a tensor product. And now the contradiction is in the sense that if you multiply all uh, operators on, the, on a, each line of the pentagram, we get plus or minus i. It's minus i for this particular choice of uh, three qubit operators, so that the same, each point you, you find it in a two, two lines, so that you have the same type of back cushion speaker uh, proof than, uh, than before, with four three qubits. You understand what I'm saying, or not? We, we have this uh, three by three square, and I explained that there is a contradiction. Uh, so, can we go back to the 3 by 3 square? Yes. Yeah. Here's why I don't understand. I, I'm not clear yet on the contradiction here. So I'm not clear when you say the eigenvalues, how we're multiplying them. If each one has some eigenvalue. If, if you uh, put any possibility, any eigenvalue to each, of this operator. Right, any plus or minus one. For example, that may be plus one here, or plus one, minus one. Okay, give a choice. Yeah. Now, you 
you do the multiplication of all the eigenvalues by rho and columns, and at the end you see each one. Wait, wait, the that's point. the part that's the part that I'm not clear. When you say you do the multiplication, you're not just multiplying a single row. No, no, all. You multiply yes. all three rows. Yes. And then all three columns. All three columns. Ah, yes. I see. Uh, this, okay. is, this is clear. This is the, the sense. But here uh, for, for two qubits this is exactly the same. Except that the, the, the geometry behind is different. Now you have five lines with four operators, each one. The product of operators on a each line is plus or minus i, is plus i except for this uh, line, minus i. But now you do the same. First line, second line, third line, fourth, fourth, fifth line. You do everyone minus twice. Minus i, okay. But for the eigenvalue, it will be plus one. This is the same type of contradiction. So called Mermin's pentagram. In fact, these two objects were introduced by, by Mermin. And similarly, uh, one can uh, also play with. Uh, uh, Vectors, in that case there are 40 vectors, uh, five, five lines times eight vectors, because we are in the eight dimensional space. And you can also give all values, but there are, there are many. And there are, in that case, this is the histogram of the distance I introduced at the beginning. And there are only three types of, of choice. Uh, Three different histograms, and this is number of proofs. In that case, there are 10, 10, 10 proofs. So, it's just a way to, to approach the subject in a general way, find all proofs. But it, this type of proof are so called parity proofs. There are other types of proofs, in fact, uh, uh, and we can do that also for other dimensions. But it's not so important to, to say uh, all proofs uh, uh, are organized in. Such a theory, it's, it's not, in fact, as it's not finished, it's not impossible to say all contextual proofs uh, are like that. It's, it's just some type of proofs are organized, as, as I said, and in fact, in that case, in terms of the basis, it's uh, not only the pentagram, but you need, you need an extra, an extra uh, base here. So that means that there is there is there are symmetries in, in behind the proofs because uh, as you see uh, these are very simple objects. So this this was the the quantum part of this particular um, talk. And now what I will say, without being too, too uh, technical, but I will say that in fact if you use uh, another language, which is the language of group the theory, then you can understand these things differently. And you don't need to uh, to have um, objects in the four-dimensional or high-dimensional Hilbert space. You you may you may restrict to uh, group theory, and uh, uh, in fact, more, more precisely, group theory with two generators, a free group with on, on two generators, and uh, this type of group was introduced by Rotendik uh, in his famous uh, Esquisse d'un programme, means sketch of a program. Everybody knew about Rotendik, did you? Maybe not, not the work, but the name of the guy. Yes. You know. <laughs> he, did, he, did, he, did, he did a very sophisticated thing that I'm going to even uh, introduce and understand, but at the end of, uh, of his life, he, he, he wrote a sketch of a program, in fact saying that everything I did, more or less, uh, you can not summarize it, but you can approach the subject of um, algebraic geometry in very simple terms, which are essentially permutation, permutation language. And the permit, in this permutation language, not only you have permutation, but you have some sort of um, topology of this object, Having uh, only uh, two uh, two generators for this, and this this is what I will introduce. And also, this this language uh, is appropriate to talk about quantum contextuality in group theoretical terms. This is the schema of the one, and, uh, and the, the, the this. Esquisa Programme was right in 1984. Can the 
algebraic permutations be interpreted as um, projections of the hyperdimensional polytopes that you can associate these things with, you know, to the group theoretic related polytopes, then you project them, you get a permutation. But uh, at the beginning, there are no polytopes. Uh, right. Uh, but, but you are right in, some, in the sense that uh, what I found following this, this, this way, I found that geometry is part of the picture. Mm -hmm. And some, po I will not say only polytope, but finite geometries. This is, uh, I will explain. Essentially, this is uh, the mixture of uh, what Grotendieck did and what Titz did about uh, this finite group and the geometry and so on. So, uh, this is, look, it's not too far <laughs> from what you're saying. Again, I will not be too, too uh, uh, technical, but the object is very simple. Just need two generators, A and B, the free group of two generators, and it's enough, okay, not, not again, it's enough but to, to, to restrict what Rotondi did. And essentially, he said that there is an algebraic geometry behind. You have to have uh, uh, an electoral relation that this square is equal to one. And, the, the, and then it is just group theory. And this is also related to what uh, we do later about uh, this uh, uh, quantum computing based on subgroups of finite index. The index is just means, well, don't forget that this group has infinitely many elements, of course, but you can divide the infinitely many elements, divide by, for example, two, group of index two, by three, group of index three, and so on. And now these subgroups, uh, correspond to uh, conjugacy classes. Well, let's say you have a subgroup H in G. The index counts the number of copies of H to, co to cover, uh, not to cover, to, to fill, to fill G. And don't forget, I have uh, the, the rule uh, infinity and divided infinity, number of finite number, the index of the subgroup. So, and the language to, to think about that, the language of coset, uh, you, you get the coset and the coset partition the, the, the group. So I want to give an example for us. Uh, that's what I like. <laughs> so it's, uh, if you take the E8 lattice, mm -hmm. we have the three A8, so, and, uh, and each uh, point of E8 is in one of these three, and so you have an index three, because uh, the coset will be in which of the three E8 it is. And in fact, we are using in the coordinate we are using the modulo function modulo three. So this is we are going from geometry coset to number coset using just the function modulo, but. Mm -hmm. This is more close to this. So the index is three. You have three subgroups, which is the three the, is of a, is a, a and a, a. Yeah, that's the way to, to approach. Uh, I think this is perfectly well written in terms of mathematics. And also, you can also play with that uh, uh, in magma, for example. This is also called uh, uh, there is a, an algorithm where, where you get the coset and get everything. Coxeter told algorithm. Coxeter and told. Told who is told? Coxeter told algorithm. So and what Golden did is he, he, he introduced some sort of uh, of topology behind. Uh, G, G is a genus of the of the of a surface. These are the number of. of black and white vertices, there are two types of vertices that you color black and white. These are the faces, and this is the, uh, this is the index. So the, the, the best is that I show you an example. Let me give an example. Well, this one is an example. This is so-called child drawing. They are black and, and white vertices, and uh, the cosets 
you find it as a numbers on the on, on the on the drawings. Okay. Then I go back to this afterwards. And another aspect is that uh, each drawing that you can create has an algebraic interpretation. Uh, you have, you have, you have a, um, essentially an equation, an algebraic equation that, that summarizes the, the, the shell drawing. And I'll give you the example. For example, these four, these four uh, shell drawings, black, white, one, so on. You see, the, here it's possible to, to put coordinates here uh, of the vertices, you have the number of on the edges, that each of, of these uh, child drawings have an equation. For example, the first one, this is the equation uh, x squared times 2 minus x squared. This is due to the, to the structure of this. You must have just two and so on. In that case, you would need a something more sophisticated that will be uh, this equation. This is, and, and this, mathematically, it's so called, this is a so-called Bailey, <coughs> Bailey's theorem, uh, that uh, each child drawing, this and all may be seen as a compact Riemann surfaces uh, defined over the field of algebra, Q bar of algebraic number. This is a strong, strong result of mathematics. Uh, and it is possible only because we started with the free group with the explorer relation B squared equal 1. So, mathematicians are very uh, excited by this type of thing. It's not the main purpose of my, of my topic, just saying that I can use uh, this theory to uh, talk about what I was showing before. That this, in fact, all, all these four uh, child drawing are able to uh, stabilize Again, I, I don't say exactly what I mean by stabilizing, but uh, it's possible to do that. That you stabilize this geometry just a square, and which corresponds to the uh, Bell's uh, theorem. So the field of algebraic numbers those are the quaternions. Ah, uh, in that case, uh, I don't know if we could put for this up one, two, three, four are the number of the edges. Here I have added this, which is outside the, the, the theory, but just to say that one has the same thing with the uh, four-dimensional operator. Now, can we put a coordinateization in terms of quaternion? I don't know if you are, can you have a four quaternions having this uh, uh, rule? I don't know, maybe. Uh, this would be this would be the group of quaternions. Uh, immediately like that, I don't know. Maybe it's possible to, to have another another type of coordination. But what I was interested by the fact that well, the, the idea was is, is there a correspondence between the the Cauchy Specker proof and and this and and at the end I would say yes as soon as you reach dimension nine. For example. With this child drawing, you can stabilize this object, which is an octagon. Okay, and uh, I have put some possibilities to coordinateize the octagon in terms of the three qubit operator. Uh, but, uh, but there are two two possibilities to create such a Familiarize such octahedron, either with such a design or another one or other, but in that case, this is different. There are two, two different cases in this way. In fact, now I'm talking about not commutativity of the operator, but commutativity of the group theoretical commutativity, which is a uh, commutation between A and B minus A minus 1, B minus 1, A, B. Okay, it's not, it's not, well, for operators, that would be A, B minus B, A. Okay, for, with uh, a, 
operators, and this is with a group theoretical uh, uh, elements. So this is this this rule. So in that case, now now I put as 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 a uh, instead of saying one, two, three, four, and so on, I have put uh, the representative of the concept class. In a given, a given class, as a, as a class as a given representative. And in the geometry, it corresponds to the vertices. And either they are to commute or, or not in this, in this way. Like this, that means they, they, they are not commuting. Here they are commuting. It's clear that the identity and A commute. Identity commute with everybody, but these two elements don't commute. But on the other hand, with this child drawing, uh, they, uh, they commute. So, and I say in that case, I, I have something that starts to be, that can be uh, named contextual, in the sense that you, you um, lose the commutativity. So we are in dimension uh, six. Okay, this is very, very, uh, Theory, but you can do that for all dimensions. And what I'm saying is that starting with dimension nine, nine there is no possible child drawing, the sun enfant, that is non commutative. That is not uh, that is not um, contextual in the sense, the theoretical sense. This is for dimension six. You have either you can stabilize such kind of object, but if you don't have a problem with, uh, with commutativity, but you start to have them, you have the problem here. Starting at dimension 9, it's impossible to find a, a, a child growing stabilizing such a, such a Three by three grid without uh, problem with commutativity. But I was saying that the, here the, 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 the child ring is on the torus. The, now it's not one, two, two, the nine, but these are the, the, the representative of the concept classes. And one looks at the commutativity like this, group theoretical commutativity. You can see that all these three elements commute in, in the group theoretical sense, but here they don't commute. So you have a perfect uh, correspondence between the problem we had with the question speaker contradiction in terms of operator, and here the possibility of having uh, these three uh, concept classes with elements mutually uh, commuting in group theoretical sense. And similarly here, you have the same problem. You cannot have a value ring where the commutativity uh, uh, is obtained. Okay, I see. So if you take the two first minor columns, they commute because trivially you have only yeah, A yeah, type yeah, and yeah. B, so it's commuting a power yes. of A. But when you introduce the B, then it's... It depends on the element. Here, for example, here, this commute. But yet, um, they don't commute. Mm -hmm. So the goal, the goal was to, to have uh, some sort of coordination that reproduces the result of quantum mechanics. This was the one, one, And what one which it's, it's possible to do, to do it, to do it yeah, using the triggering of uh, Kotendik. But it, maybe it uh, may not be the only way to do that, but at least it works. So and you could you could have more uh, general uh, dimensions. For example, uh, this object corresponds to 40 bit, uh, a of 40 bit, and you have this is so-called uh, uh, projected space with uh, element in phi uh, f2, and you can stabilize this object with this drawing, and we have problem with contextuality. And doing that, you can continue and observe that 
uh, we have problems that are related to uh, geometry that one can identify. This object, general quadrangle, 2 1 correspond to middle school, 2 2. Uh, I will get it again uh, for the 2 qubit computation. Uh, and so on. So this has to do with the so called black hole qubit uh, uh, correspondence that people are interested in, and so on. This object is also interesting, correspond to three qubit contextuality. But how you can define the even provision of black hole in this geometry? So sorry? Why do you call it black hole? Black hole, ah, black yes. Hole is it's another story. By even uh, it's another story. Uh, I can summarize this. It's not my own work, but uh, okay. uh, for example, Peter Hewe uh, working on that and other, other people. They are, they are black hole, it's, they are mathematical black hole. They are not, uh, <laughs> not the, black, the real black hole, mathematical black hole. Just to say that uh, studying the correct, in fact, this theory uh, is just based on the fact that uh, quantum entanglement uh, in quantum information correspond to um, topology, uh, some sort of topological entropy in the, in the, in the black hole. There, there, there is a correspondence that was, that was studied, but I'm not able to, uh, to enter into this, this detail. Just to say that this object, Jean Quadrangle of, of the 2 4, uh, is found in this context. But for this, this geometry here, uh, you can, I can show you. Uh, they look like. This is a set of 63 <coughs> vertices, and there are also 63 triples of points that are lines. Uh, and this geometry called the H22, general exact hexagonal of order two, and it refers to tits. I mentioned at the beginning, it refers to tits work. Uh, this polygon, is, there are no polytops, but po generic polygons. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, it, it is, this is um, uh, related to the structure of three qubits in the sense that you can, of, you can select, uh, you can observe that the three qubits operator are such that they you multiply them, you get plus, plus the identity matrix or for the eight. This is a structure that fits well the what happens uh, in, a, in a free qubit, uh, in a set of the 60 free qubit operator? Michel, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but we, we have this uh, eclectic paper that covers a lot of different uh, clues from physics, from other people's work on how, how the golden ratio correlates to quantum thermodynamics. I, have you seen that? Uh, Chapter eight that we published in the in the Minkowski Institute uh, book. If if not, if you haven't read that, you should look at that because there's some equations in there on these mathematical black holes that uh, reduce the correspondence in in all of the the values um, in several black hole equations, both classic and quantum, uh, where related to thermal dynamics uh, as the golden ratio. It, they're explained in the, in those references. It's not our work. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the references is actually Marcello's equation, and one is Rovelli's, and one is uh, Paul Davies. But you should look at that because okay. it, it seems to it seems that these mathematical black holes, when you try to relate uh, entropy, quantum entropy, which I'm very interested in, somehow the golden ratio, in a very deep way, com comes out in these most elegant reduction reductions. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, Ray, maybe you could give him a copy of our book if yes, we have extras. We discuss this morning about this, this book. But, uh, I thought you read it. Uh, it it's a, it's a golden ratio. In yeah. the book. It's the book with Einstein on the cover. It's a celebration yes, of his. Yes, uh, give one to you. Yes. Yeah. A blue book. Uh, we'll, give, we'll, ah. give, we'll give that to you. Yes, uh, uh, OK. Uh, I will see. Uh, but, but this, this object that occurred, uh, Analyzing the structure of three qubit operators uh, can be uh, created <laughs> with this chart drawing. Not so simple, but uh, this is 60. You see now the, there are 63 edges, and this stabilizes this object. Uh, and it turns out that there is dual to this with the same uh, automorphism group. This is this is like that. Uh, again, 63 points, 63 lines, but different way, same automorphism group. This is the dual of the of GH22. 
And this is another side drawing that uh, created. So one could continue, in fact, our other papers, where uh, this language of uh, Grotendieck side drawing is useful to understand the um, symmetry structure that, that occur in uh, finite groups in general. And this is this, is, this paper, Atlas of Groups, uh, something uh, that is a paper on that. This that was written later. But restricting to this context, oh, this is the end. Yeah. Okay, so you can do that. Maybe I had it. Yes, I had it. No, because the, the picture, the picture was before. That's the conclusion. Is there a second, uh, another page after? Maybe it's ending. Ah, yes, this was this. That you can even create a contextuality measure just looking at the number of frames that are not commuting. This was. Mm -hmm. And I introduced this uh, subject. We are also more general octagon. We are also this. Also this zero to four appears. In fact, this structure appears in this theory, and it's interesting that they they play a role in, uh, in the context of uh, quantum uh, information and, and the problem of quantum contextuality of quantum information. This this summarizes what uh, what I did. I think that. Uh, Ahmed and me, we will be more interested to to understand more about the pentagram used as a Mermin pentagram here. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, yes. <laughs> maybe it has some me yeah, meaning. Yeah. And you want me to put the other presentation? Yeah. And also, I think uh, maybe you can. Uh, Continue about what Klee was asking about the golden ratio by just uh, explaining what we discussed about how you work with continuous function to really realize where the golden ratio ah. appears in the continuous function yeah. in the case of measurement. Yeah. So this experience is very, no, is very it, important. Yeah, we we talk, even if you have those slides, yes. what we talked about this morning. Yeah, yes, yes. 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 Uh, Raymond showed me a, a paper that is not published with the uh, font form about yes, uh, yes. starting with the uh, this one dimensional uh, quasi crystal and uh, the structure of it uh, with uh, the golden ratio and the Fibonacci chain. Yes. It's a Fibonacci work. Fibonacci, Fibonacci work. Fibonacci yes. And and he um, showed me that you 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 did a Fourier transform of this. In fact, taking the the, the explicit expression of this chain and taking the Fourier transform, and he got and he got this interesting uh, cardio cardioid like fragment and so on. So and uh, it um, remind me. Uh, kind of a signal processing I developed in two papers, one in 1999 and one in 2005, which is essentially based on a number theory and so-called Roland Nijan sort. And the idea is that in the Fourier transform, in fact, your, 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 your wavelets are sinusoid. Now the wavelets refer to Lock, local local uh, analysis of the signal, but there is a counterpart in normal theory, in fact, of Roman vision sort, where you analyze the rule. In fact, this is, you, anal you analyze something which is intrinsically non local, like part of the, look like the normal theoretical function, like sum of divisor, uh, Euler function, and so on. You can, you can say something at the level of signal process, number theoretical like signal processing about that. Instead of taking the Fourier transform on the, let's say, the sum of divisor, you take this transform, which is a, based on wavelets, comma, comma, that are not wavelets, but extended wavelets, if you like, 
that are called Ramani Johnson. So that mathematically, uh, Ramani Johnson is just a, a sum of other prime, uh, the primitive root of the unity. Ramani Johnson. is this sum over the primitive q fruit of unity with pq equal 1. That means, for example, if you have 1 over 2, it's okay. But if you have 2 over 4, this is 1 over 2. That, that means you, you count P, it just PQ, once. pq are prime together. So pq uh, should be prime to, prime to each other. Co -prime. In, the, in the ordinary um, Fourier transform, you don't have such a relation. That means when, when you look at the spectrum, you have just we have a line for each value of the of the p and q. Instead of summing on all the integer p, you sum only on the integer p which are co-prime with q. Yes. So that it's like a classical Fourier transform, but you remove some term depending on a number theory. And so and if you if you do that, well you can do that in, a, for example, you want to analyze the sigma n sum of divisor function. But it will be something like CQ1, CQN, and here something like A of Q. These are, these are the, the wavelengths in some sense. And this E of Q, E of Q has a value I don't remember for the sum of the divisor, but something quite simple of the type Q or one of the Q, I don't remember what it is, simple. But if you, if you take the, the discrete Fourier transform of the sum of divisor function, it would be irreversible. It would be nothing, in fact. But in that particular case, it's very simple if you take this Roman division sum. But now, forget about the arithmetical function, such as the sum of divisor function, but take a, a real signal in, in real life that may be a, a The luminosity of the of the sun that can be uh, uh, the, the, the phen financial data, financial data that are known to be very wrong and so on. And if you do that, sometimes you get more more structure that you would not uh, find using the ordinary photon. So a good example: take a. Uh, Frequency modulated signal, sinusoidal signal with a frequency that is modulated with a high index of modulation. If you take the Fourier transform, you get a, an horrible thing with many, many many light that you will not recover. But if you take the Ramanujan sum Fourier analysis, then you get only three lines that are essentially uh, the main frequency, the modulated frequency, and a uh, um, PPCM of uh, the, 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 the least common multiple yeah, of, of, of the two. This is in the, in the paper in 2005. And now, if one starts from a sinusoidal signal, in fact, the, the, the line is not only uh, at the, the right frequency, it also contains the influence of the phase. If you, are, if you start from a, from a signal with phase, then you can see it in the in the in the in the, in the, in the sound. You have, you have a, a signal that is frequency sensitive and at the same time phase sensitive. This is quite interesting. So now going back to what you mentioned, what about what would be the the Ramanujan Fourier analysis of the sequence? Uh, that you mentioned of the Fibonacci uh, chain. chain, and this is uh, something we, we have to start. And I'm confident that something more organized will, should uh, should emerge. This is what you thought. Yeah, yes. In fact, I think that we can use this to compute the interaction 
in the QSN between two quasi Fibonacci chains, which are not exactly Fibonacci chains, but uh, uh, which are in fact a combination of different uh, deflation, inflation of the Fibonacci chain with different translation. The translation will be the phase, and the inflation deflation will be the frequency here. So it's maybe a good tool to. To make this. But in fact, uh, in the basis I wanted just you to explain that you you really masterize uh, the f continuous fraction. Ah, this is another in aspect. Physics, yes. This, this is this another is aspect of the so called. Uh, where the golden ratio emerges in physics, yes. and we have two diseases and we have not found <laughs> because we, we didn't have this, this competence. Well, the first topic uh, uh, I was working on, uh, one of the first topic, was about the noise of uh, very uh, stable oscillators. Uh, and to uh, approach this subject, I was led to introduce uh, so-called continued fraction expansion. Uh, or, or, for a given number, either you can see it as a, just a rational number. For example, if you take uh, close to what, it's going to 5 minus 1 over 2, it's close to uh, Let's say 3 5 or uh, even uh, further, a complicated fraction. But if you expand the golden ratio in terms of uh, continued fractions, it's very simple. What is a continued fraction? Continued fraction, given a, you know, given a number mu, can always be expressed as a zero, which is the uh, integral part. A one, a two. This means a zero. Example, if you take uh, new equal root of 5 minus 1 over 2, this is 0 and only the 1. Simple number like that, where one can extract the period. That could be something different. It could be one to three, periodic, and so on. There are very simple number like that. But this one is the simplest, the simplest one in terms of uh, uh, continuous fraction expansion, uh, and this is also the one that, uh, that is, uh, which is uh, the worst for um, approximation. If you want to say mu minus. Uh, Uh, no. This is new. This one I call it Golden uh, Ratio. New uh, minus new G minus P over two. We want to find a, a fraction that approximates the Golden Ratio. Uh, this should be uh, something like. Uh, Something here, I forgot, but this is uh, the worst case here with the golden ratio. But sometimes this can be much better if you have numbers that are closest to uh, uh, rational numbers. Just to say that the continued fraction expansion tells you something about the type of number you are looking at. This is a so-called Fontaine uh, approximation theory, uh, and like that. But this is a good 
which is well, well, well on this, on this one. Yes, no, but then no. it's, uh, it's well written everywhere that the golden ratio is the most irrational, and then it has physical specific properties, but this is what we were not able to understand in the current literature. Why and what are the equations who show that it has physical uh, specificity? But and in your paper, you, you show this. Yeah, but this is well known, uh, even if it is well known for people uh, by, by this aspect of the theory. I mean, it's a very simple uh, number, I mean, a solution of the quadratic uh, equation, uh, algebraic quadratic equation, very simple. Yes, but to prove that uh, <coughs> this number has a specific yeah. physical behavior, so in your example with the filtering, you have seen this. Ah, this is something else. Yes. Uh, yes, but I tried to, check to, uh, to find paper yes. explaining this, that is very few. <laughs> It turns out that this continued fraction, we, one can't find them in, in uh, experiments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, essentially, well, well, this is the topic I don't want to, to enter, but one can say, essentially, the, the, the theory of chaos, determinist is chaos, mm -hmm. determinist is chaos. Starting with Poincaré, have to do with these things, in the sense that the right understanding is obtained with continued fraction expansion. If you want to understand the calendar, the unique calendar, is in terms of continuous fraction expansion. And also in electronics, you can create a very simple experiment where you compare, you measure an oscillator against another one, uh, you multiply the two signals, you, you take a low pass filter, and what is behind, and what is obtained in the measurement can be completely understood in terms of this language. So this is what you refer to. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, this continued fraction expansion has probably to do with, with uh, the quasi crystal since this type of number. Uh, that may be enough, a way to, to enter this subject also through continued fraction ex expansion. Mm -hmm. This is what you wanted to mention. Yeah, yeah, yes. But this is another. Uh, now we have someone uh, that we can ask the question about this <laughs> and get answers <laughs> about the KM and. Uh, even maybe some relationship between uh, planets. Yeah, well, it's called Hamiltonian it's chaos. It's maybe the Hamiltonian chaos is related <laughs> to this. Uh, <laughs> so this was the first part, and now the second one is uh, more, okay. more more difficult. Uh, maybe how, how long have we been working? But we're talking already one hour. Uh, yes, we can one more one more one up until four, I think. Ten minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, it's good that I show you uh, what uh, I'm doing at the moment, and uh, what also what is the subject uh, we develop with uh, Marcelo and Pli and uh, Raymond and other things, where, where it goes, but I know it's difficult and also uh, after, after some time it, one cannot follow, so I will try to be uh, very concrete. Forget about the title, it's not because it's just the end of the work. Forget about the title. Let's start, let us start with this. The topic is, a, is the quantum computing. And at the end, topological quantum computing. Uh, this topic has to do again with permutation theory, but in a simple sense that I have shown before. Uh, and this topic has also to do with um, the hyperbolic geometry in the simplest sense, which is the, this group, the SL2 of Z, the, the group of uh, conformal transformation, AZ plus B, or CZ plus D, AD, ABCD equal integral, and AD minus BC equal 1. So that you map the point of the Uparach plane into a point of the Uparach plane. Okay? And 
This group can be considered to be a knot. So called reform knot. You know what is reform knot? It's just yes. some sort of knot, not the simplest one. You can you can talk about this element, this this, this group in terms of, of uh, the topology of the reform knot. I will show you. So and uh, so this is this object. The topic uh, has to be quantum computing in the sense that uh, for doing uh, quantum computing, one plays with objects that are called uh, Pauli uh, matrices, and I showed you the simplest case of the uh, X and Z gate, single gate, and also you saw two qubit gate. Uh, okay, this, this is that is our so-called Pauli gate. In the sense that there is a simple group, Pauli group, that talk about that. But it's not enough to do quantum computing. To do quantum computing, you have to to put other other gate like the so-called control node gate to con to to at the end to be able to to play for, for with any kind of matrix. So and what one way to approach the subject is to, was done by Kitaev, not in the reference, Bravi and Kitaev, where they introduced the idea of a so called magic state. What is a magic state? But, uh, no. the, the Pauli gate, uh, the Pauli matrices have eigenvalues, that's uh, an uh, eigenvector, eigenstates, also called stabilizer states. But there are also other, other type of eigenstates that are not in the Pauli group. And it's enough to have, to have one called to, to, to do universal quantum computation. What Ravi and Kitai did was in dimension two. Uh, and uh, the approach I have is more general, can be done for any, any type of dimension. So, random computing, universal quantum computing, relation to permutation. It's not here, but I would say that the permutation is so for permutation gate, but not, in, not each, the, each gate is a permutation, control not gate is a permutation, but there are many gates that are not permutation. But if you start from permutation and you see them as gates, quantum gates, then you can play with that and it's enough to uh, to, uh, to do universal quantum computation that will be explained. So this, and then one can go further and replace the Z here, integral, by uh, Quadratic uh, uh, by an OD, which is the, the it's an element in the ring Q of square minus D, D positive. Imaginary quadratic. So, this is the general uh, overview of what I could do, could say. But maybe I will be shorter than that. But at least I explained that. Uh, you can pass from a uh, permutation to a gate. Example, this permutation corresponds to this uh, x gate. This permutation corresponds to this d times x vertical product. The control node gate uh, also corresponds to permutation. You can either, either way, starting from the permutation or from the gate, as you, as you like. The simplest magic gate matrix state introduced by Gravi is this one. H like it, in fact, is an eigenstate of the Adamar matrix. And then another one, which is an eigenstate of a more general uh, matrix that is not written here, something like HT, I forget what it is. But it turns out that this, this magic state can be prepared, well prepared, Cleanly prepared, and this is the content, of, the content of this paper. And now, what I'm doing is to generalize this ID to higher dimension, not only qubit, but q trig and so on. And it starts at dimension 3. You start from a group, 
there are six uh, elements, of course. The six elements are six permutations, but you can see as gates. In fact, they are, they are the gate i, x, and x squared, where x is the x gate for q trees. Okay? These are the Pauli gates. But they are also extra permutation. These three permutations, extra permutation. The eigenstates of these uh, matrices here are familiar states. And the eigenstates of these extra permutations are different. In fact, I'm talking about the extra states. These are the states. Uh, these are the magic states. Okay. This type. Okay. But it's enough to uh, it's enough to um, arrive at an interesting result that is here that you have in for Cupid you have nine operators and they can organize into a geometry into the geometry of the uh, so-called SL configuration. That means it's two but operators on a, on a triple. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not like that. What, 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 is it? Oh. what is the meaning of this? It's not commutation in general. You start from, a, from a, a state like this one and you apply the n all nine operators on this. In fact, you, can, you don't see the vertices as uh, Vectors themselves are projectors. And in that case, if you see them as projectors, then the, the triple of projectors is such that the product is a simple but is constant. Or has only two values, a few, few values only. So and at the end, one can say there is a simple geometry behind. Maybe it will be more explicit if I do that for two qubits because, uh, because I talked about two qubits before. In that case, the, the magic state, uh, what is it? Well, this is, in that case, this is the magic state. This is what I said before. This is another magic state, like this. Well, this is six root of unity. Uh, you you uh, start from a magic state, you apply the operators that are here, see them as projectors, and the geometry is this one. It turns out the same geometry that one has for the commutation of two qubit operator, which is nice. Not, it was not planned before. That is a very simple geometry. A subset of this geometry is the object we have found before that was used to, to um, understand the question spectrum. Now you see this. This problem of contextuality for two qubits is part of a picture that is more general than that we will do in quantum computing and also to uh, the, the, mag the magic states uh, I have mentioned. And I, am not, I was not complete in the sense that um, we are talking on informationally complete POEM. Again, I have not defined exactly what it means. Uh, there is a theory of this project of, and the fact that you, you have this equality for pure VN that are symmetric information is complete. This, this, uh, these are for the, for the vectors, and these are for the, for the trace of the projector, the simple relation. And from this, you can recover an unknown state. But even, even if the symmetric is not uh, realized, and this is precisely the, this case for here, uh, in that case, it was just one value, but uh, yeah, this value, then in that case, you have, you have to, to uh, two values. But you can't continue from any dimension, you can continue and create information complete POVM arising from an appropriate magic state. So this summarizes uh, this summarize 
this uh, another aspect now is that all, all these objects I mentioned, all these magic things, you can think about them starting with a simple group, which is a modular group I mentioned uh, at, the, at the beginning. Uh, property of this group you, you have it here that uh, it is generated by the translation and an inversion. It isolates the, the large pain. Uh, and it is, enough, it is enough to talk about uh, these, uh, the object uh, I've mentioned before. So, uh, I think maybe it's, we will not go too far. I, I'll just show you that one can't recover this type of object starting from either in the, with the view of child drawing, as I mentioned in the previous talk, or with the view of the modular group. These are all dimensions, all subgroup of the modular group that are involved. Uh, this is in the, in the paper. And now, okay, I stop for this aspect. And I say, everything you can, you can see it in terms of um, the theory of knots. Because the, the modular group can be seen as a, a knot, and it's a fundamental group of a knot, which is a treble knot. I should have a picture of this. This is the truffle knot. Where is that? This one. Yeah. No, where? He's asking where. <laughs> <That's good too. laughs> well, the photograph is taken in some place. Ah, the, the photography. Ah, this is a real, real, uh, <laughs> real knot. That is, that is a sculpture. I, to be honest, I don't know. But, uh -huh. yeah, uh, so, but, but it's interesting that now it's completely, this picture, then you have a picture, and this picture is able to say more or less everything about the, about the modular group. This, this, this is the idea at the beginning. Mm -hmm. In fact, what, what does it mean? You have a, you have a space, the space is the real three-dimensional space, and you have, you have a knot. Essentially, you imagine a very simple, uh, thin uh, thread, right? okay? And it deforms the space around and create so-called free manifold. But the symmetry is encoded in the fundamental group of the free manifold, which in that case is a, a truth, uh, modular group. Okay, this is the idea. Now, uh, instead of talking about subgroup of the modular group, you can talk about covering of the of degree D of the fundamental group of the trefoil knot manifold. And it, and at the end, you have other, other elements of understanding that are different. The type of covering, the homology of the covering, the number of cuts of the covering, and so on. And you can, and if you are happy, uh, the, the corresponding subgroup has a name in terms of the other knots. For example, for the case of the dimension 3 and dimension 4, for the appropriate covering, then you have link that I've shown here, these are, these are the, the, new, the new link. Link is a bit that uh, here there is just one piece, here there are, there are two, uh, two pieces, okay, in that case, okay, two pieces. Two, so, two knots, if you like, that are inside, inside each other. And they, are, they have a name, mm -hmm. uh, they have a name, uh, Yes. Are they are they linking trefoils still, or is it? Is it but these are not trefoil in that case. Yeah. Something else. Mm -hmm. They have a, here. They have a name. Mm -hmm. And then you you look the the name that correspond to the subgroup of the modular group, or you use the name corresponding to the link. So the, the idea is that you pass from one one view to the to another one, and the, this this other view is a so-called Theory of free manifold. What is, what is it? We start with the question of Poincaré that there, there is only one simply connected cross free manifold and it is homomorphic to the free sphere. And it was proved only recently that only this, uh, only one case. 
And now, why is it interesting? You can see from the beginning because uh, this, because this uh, definition of the sphere S3 is three, the same as one qubit. Because when you have a qubit, you expand uh, zero and one. You have this relation of probability. Okay, probability of having zero is a. Probability of having one is uh, one is of b. No, one is of a. One is of b. A square, sorry, modulus of B square, and the form of probability is 1. And this is the definition of SV, the sphere S3. That is, the Poincare conjecture, you can say, we are, talk, we are already talking about qubits. This is the idea, the starting idea. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, we continue. Uh, can we give a meaning to the fact that they are not, not only the Poincare? Uh, Sphere, but all the type of free manifold. This is the this is the, and the answer is yes. There are many types of uh, free manifolds, and they, we can use them for doing um, uh, for work for doing quantum computing. This is this is the main uh, the main idea. So this one step, and then I, I don't want to, to be too precise here. Replacing the modular group by a more complicated group. So called Yankee group. What is interesting is that the, the, the subgroup of given index of the PSL2 of OD for a given D by escape correspond to a, to the, to to not and and, and links. If you are, if you like all this uh, set of different knot links and so on, at least many of them, many of many of interesting such links, just arise from the subgroup structure of this Bianchi group. This is the this is the this is the idea. There is main much structure in this in this object. Uh, so and then and then uh, then. <laughs> And then one can do different operation. Uh, two, two of them are important. You have, you have a knot like this. You cut and you, you rotate and you and you pass. So called then surgery. And there is an, another another operation which is called drilling out the geodesic loop inside the inside the manifold. In fact, if you if you do that for the shortest geodesic, you have also interesting thing. For example, the, uh, doing this, I discover an, uh, an interesting structure. That you start from uh, like this this link called Thurston link, has to do with the Thurston that that created the, the theory. And if you this way, if you uh, perform dead feeling, that is you, in fact, you cut, you rotate just half a turn on one dead feeling, then you, you pass a chain of links like this. And the, the reverse operation, looking out the geodesic, this is you. You get the same. In some sense, the two relations, uh, then filling and uh, bringing out a shorter geodesic, as meaning. And the idea is that this, all these uh, links have a meaning in terms of quantum computing. This is, this is the idea. But I don't want to be uh, too. Uh, don't want to say too much about that. These are the, the link. Sometimes they correspond to congruent subgroup of the Yankee group, sometimes no. What does it mean? At the end you have a